My pranams to Sri Ramakrishna, Mother Sharada, and Swami Vivekananda. My respects to revered Sri Kantanandaji Maharaj as we begin a few episodes on Holy Mother Sri Sharada Devi. Recently, we celebrated the birth anniversary of Holy Mother Sharada Devi on 26th of December. Usually, to talk about the mother is very difficult. But to love the mother, to care for the mother, to depend on the mother, it is so much easier. Let us now not concentrate on the biography of the mother as such, because all of us can read the biography. Multiple editions of the biography are available. You know, we have the seminal volume of Gambhirananda We have a new version of Swami Chaitananda Ji. All these are wonderful biographies. We can learn when she was born, what she did, etc. But the focus which we can take here is to talk about various aspects of the mother's life and what they teach us. Because the mother is a powerful model for all of us to learn from. If we take the mother as our model, if we follow the incidents of her life and try to translate those values into our life, then our life becomes meaningful. Today, I thought we could talk about the traits of leadership in the Holy Mother Sri Sharada Devi. Today, everybody is talking about leadership. Even when you apply for a job, they are looking for leaders. Whatever job you do, whatever work you do, you need to be a leader. Within the family, leadership is very important because when we live in the family, we also need the right kind of leaders. The state, the country, the whole world requires leaders who are inspiring, leaders who are value oriented. So in all our lives, personal and professional life, social life, and every aspect of life, leadership is important. And of course, to become a spiritually strong person, we have to be leaders of ourselves. Real strong spirituality is the core of our life, is the foundation of a good life. There too, we require to be leaders. So let us look at the mother and her actions, her experiences, which can teach us something about leadership. What are the traits which are required? Now, the first trait which I mentioned already is to be a leader of ourselves. It is not necessarily to, necessary to lead others first. If we want to lead others, we have to first lead ourselves. That is, we need to check up who we are and how we can improve. Look at the ability of the mother to lead herself. As a young lady living in Dakshineshwar Kali temple in the Nahabad, the mother would come and sit for meditation when the sun, uh, when the moon was shining brightly, she would pray to God by saying, God, make my mind pure like the moon. Of course, the moon also has some blemishes, some marks. Let my mind not have any of these marks. Purity. Mother is a symbol of purity. And this purity, we can see how she's cultivating within herself. 
our experiences in the world today have become such that we have forgotten this trait of purity. But a leader who's an, not a pure leader, who does not have purity within, who does not have this value, is no leader at all. That is why we have rampant corruption. We have people deceiving each other. We have people exercising their power wrongly on each other. So purity. Much later, the mother went to Vrindavan and there she prayed in the temple by saying, O oh Lord, make my mind in such a way that I cannot find fault with people. Fault finding is something terrible. We keep criticizing people negatively. They are not harmed. The real harm comes to us. Therefore, the mother is saying, O oh Lord, make my mind free of finding fault. Later in life, many people told her that you should scold such a person, you should correct this person. She said, sorry, I cannot find fault with anybody. There is goodness in everyone who makes a fault. Look at how she's transforming. First, she's leading herself. You know, she's going into the mode of self-leading and then she's teaching everybody. Says, fault finding is not necessary. Because in the fault, you should find a way of overcoming that problem and becoming a positive trait there. We have many examples in her life which you can find how she does not find fault. Golapma, who was a devotee of Sri Ramakrishna and a long companion of Holy Mother Sar Sharada Devi, used to tell her, Mother, don't be like this. Please scold this person, scold that person. Mother would never scold. She would call and explain and tell them how to do what is right, how to avoid what is wrong in a persuasive manner, not in a manner of fault finding or scolding or making a negative hurtful comment. She never did such a thing. So you, we can see that the first trait of leadership, which the mother has taken very seriously in her life, she made herself into a leader. From childhood, the mother had a lot of scope for leadership. She was the eldest in a family of brothers. Her younger brothers were looked after very carefully with the motherly affection by this little girl, Sharada. She was very young. Her pet name was Sharu. The parents used to call her. The parents gave her a lot of love and affection and a lot of importance because before her birth, both the father and the mother had spiritual visions that a divine being is going to come to your house. The father went to the river bank in their village, Jairambati, and there he saw the mother riding on the lion. And this was only a dream state. He said that, oh, who are you? He says, I'm coming to you. Similarly, in a place called Shihor, the place where her mother was born, Shama Shundari Devi, she was sitting under a tree and a little girl came as though and put her arms round her. In this place today, you can see that, you know, enclosed place and Sharada Mat Center is there. If you get a chance, you can visit. This is where the little girl, divine child, told Sharada Devi's mother that I'm coming to your house. So the mother was always given this priority. She was born on a Thursday. And in Bengal, Thursday is considered to be the day of the Devi. Lakshmi Puja is done every Thursday. So when the mother was born on a Thursday, they considered her 
to be the divine child in the family. But the mother did not think of this as a great thing. Although she got a lot of love and affection, she did not become spoiled. She used to look after her brothers in such a loving way. Not only when they were very small babies, but even when they were elderly people, they had become old, still the mother took their responsibility. So her support from her parents, her experience of childhood, looking after the younger brothers, all this gave her self-confidence. She knew that she could do it. She knew that she was capable of doing things. She would help her father and mother with all household work. As, as a small child, she knew how to cook for the family, but she could not take the rice and remove the starch from the rice because it was a big container. So she needed the help of the elders to do that. The rest of it she could do with her small hands, whatever she could do. All this gave her confidence. She used to go to the field, carrying the food for the workers. She would ensure that all the workers got the food. She would go to cut the grain. She would stand in the water cutting the grain. All these childhood activities gave the mother a lot of confidence. We find this confidence as a very important trait of leadership because a leader who lacks confidence can never be a good leader. That is why when Sri Ramakrishna gave her the responsibility of the spiritual ministry, he said that you have to be the spiritual guide for the future of humanity. The mother took up this responsibility. She used her self-confidence. She gave a lot of advice, a lot of problems she solved for all the great people like the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. Swami Vivekananda, the world conquering leader was like a small baby in front of her. He would behave like a small child. Swami Brahmananda, Swami Sharadananda, all these, you know, Swami Abhedananda who wrote the hymn to her. All these people came to her. So you can imagine her confidence. These were all realized souls. These had touched the master. They had been inducted into the order, inducted into a group, coherent group of spiritual uh, you know, ministry by the master. So if these people could be treated like her own children by her, she required a lot of self-confidence. She initiated people everywhere, people who were more you know, qualified possibly than her, more, much richer than her, people who were very poor, people who were serving only as porters in a station. She did not say no to anybody people who were male and female. She did not make any difference. She, this shows her confidence. She never made any distinction between caste or religion. She belonged to the caste which is called the highest, that is the Brahmin caste. But she never felt that anybody was Brahmin or anybody was Shudra. She had a disciple who was a Muslim, Amjad. When people were ill-treating Amjad, they were throwing the food because touching a Muslim would be, you know, that we have lost our religion. The mother said, no, Amjad is equal to me as Swami Shardananda. Swami Shardananda was the closest. He built a house for her, Udbodhan in Kolkata. So nothing can compare to Sh Swami Shardananda's position in the mother's household. But look at the mother's confidence, which says that religion is not important. Caste is not important. What is important is your devotion to God. If you are devoted, if you are spiritual, 
if you really believe you have strong faith, then you are no different. The devotees of this world do not have a caste or a religion which is different. They are all my children. She took them like that. Look at her confidence when she welcomed the Western disciples of Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda was worried that the mother is very orthodox. She has been born and brought up in a village. In those days, India was under the British. So people who had a white skin were not given much respect. <coughs> They were not given, you know, any intimacy or closeness. Swamiji's disciples, especially Sister Nivedita, Josephine McLeod, Mrs. Bull, these people were very devoted to Swami Vivekananda. They came to India. Swamiji wanted them to meet the mother because for him, the mother was the divine in human form. So he wanted, but he was scared. He had this fear. He didn't have that confidence that the mother would accept them. The mother is so confident that when they came, she did not know English, but she welcomed them. She made them sit next to her. She shared her food with them, which was just not done. You know, you would lose your caste if you shared food with these people. They were called as nature in those days. So you could not do it. But the mother did not think like that because the entire Ramakrishna tradition believes this, that there is no caste, no religion. All of us are human beings. We are all the children of divinity, no differences. But this requires a lot of confidence. Even today, in 2022, I find people of different religions, different castes, avoiding each other, hating each other, or saying that they are something which we cannot tolerate. But look at mother. She has confidence to declare that all of us are the same. All of us are the children of divinity. Then you have a very important quality of leadership, and that is innovation, innovative thinking. You know, a good leader needs to have innovative thinking. I'm talking about little Sharada now, the little child who is just a few years old. And there is a huge famine in Bengal at this time. People were starving and dying of starvation. Whatever little mother's father had, they were not rich, they were very poor. But whatever stored grain he had for the whole year, he opened his stores. He said that, no, we will feed everybody, whoever comes to our village or our house who is hungry. So during the famine, the entire stock was cooked and they used to make khichdi, you know, dal and rice together. And they would serve it to whoever came. People were so hungry because it was a terrible famine. We can't imagine these days. But many artificial famines were created when India was not ruling itself. Today also we have poor people. We have 75 years of independence. We have not eradicated poverty, but it is unimaginable what was there during the mother's childhood, during the mother's lifetime. So we find the mother's innovative thinking. She's a little child, you know, five-year-old child. When they come and they start eating that hot food, the tongue would get burnt but they could not wait because they were so hungry. The sight of food made them eat the hot food and burn themselves. This little child took a fan. You know, in those days, you used to have palm tree fans. It is a hand fan. It has one stick and a leaf around. 
she would take that fan and she would fan the food with her small hands. Her hands must have pained so much, but she never gave it up because she realized that she could help these people to eat a comfortable temperature food if she helped them. Nobody told her to do this innovation. You can imagine. The mother was innovative throughout her life. We have many examples of innovation in all her words, in all her experiences. She used to take a lot of care to look after the delicate health of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa. So she used to give him milk to drink. He could not drink a lot of quantity because seeing the quantity, he would feel worried. He'd say, no, no, not for so much for me. So with wooden fire, with her eyes burning with tears, she would not care for herself, but she would boil that milk for a longer time so that the quantity looked less. Did somebody tell her these things? They did not. She learned it herself. That is what innovation, getting your own creative ideas. Once she was preparing a pan, and you know, the pan is the beetle leaf. She was preparing many of them, some very special and some very ordinary. So people must have, you know, people used to come to her. They asked, mother, you're preparing special pan for Sri Ramakrishna, the master and ordinary ones for the devotees? She said, no, no, that is not correct. I'm preparing the ordinary ones for the master because he's already my own. I don't have to impress him. I don't have to make him my own. But for the others, for the people who come for the first time, I need to make them my own. I need to do something special for them. This special, doing something special, makes them my own. Therefore, I make special fun for them. These simple examples teach us how we can innovate. People feel that, you know, unless I'm a great scientist, unless I'm a very important person, I cannot innovate. But innovation is there in every part of our life. We cannot think of innovation as something which only happens at the higher level. Even simple people, people who are doing the most ordinary jobs, people who only stay at home and look after the family, they also can innovate. Imagine the kind of innovation a mother requires to bring up her children. Every moment is an innovation. Think of all the examples of your childhood where you find your mother's and your grandmother's innovations which made your life so easy. So the mother teaches us this important quality of leadership. A good leader, of course, needs to have excellent decision-making ability. Decision-making causes a lot of stress to us. Should we do this? Should we do that? Should we not do this? In the beautiful description which Sister Nivedita gives of the mother, she says that however difficult a problem you brought to her, she would give a solution which was very wide. She would give a solution which was so excellent. This is what we find again and again in her life. Let me give you a few examples of this. You know, we have the Chicago experience of Swami Vivekananda. People were telling him that he should participate in the parliament of religions. He should represent India. He should go. Swamiji also felt that, yes, he should go. He had a vision of the master telling him that he should go. But the final authority of decision-making for him was the mother. So he wrote, 
He was not in Kolkata, the mother was there. He was in Chennai. He wrote a letter, he said, mother, everybody is saying, there is this parliament, should I go? Many orthodox people were telling him, don't go because in those days, if you went to a you know, foreign country, if you went beyond the boundaries of India, you were supposed to have lost your religion, your caste. This is what we have seen, you know, people saying in those days. Of course, now we have Indian diaspora all over the world. We don't have these ideas, but I'm talking about a long time back, 150 years back. So people, there were many people who were telling Vivekananda, don't go. How can you go? You are an Orthodox Hindu boy. You should not go. But mother was an Orthodox Hindu woman. But she wrote a letter saying, my son, you have to go. You must go because I know that you're going to spread the master's word all over the world. The master is telling me that you are the voice of the master. So you must go. The day Swamiji got this letter, he felt so happy. The description is given that he was jumping with joy. You see the mother? The mother did not hesitate to make the decision. And a leader of the caliber of Swami Vivekananda depended on her decision. So look at the silent leadership of the mother. We all think that to be very aggressive, to have many followers, for everybody to say, oh, we are the greatest, that is the decision-making ability. But that is not really decision-making. The mother also, you know, had to make a very important decision. Before the masters leaving the world, he had told, go to Kamarpukur. Kamarpukur is the village where the master was born. They had a small house. Go and live there. Even if you don't get anything, eat a little rice and salt. Don't bother to ask anybody for anything. The temple was supposed to give some pension to the mother, but this was never given after the master's passing away. So the mother had no money. She could have asked because the disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, the devotees of Sri Ramakrishna were all in Kolkata, some of them very, very well off. She did not ask. She made the decision. It was a conscious decision. Don't tell anybody you have problems. Go to Kamar Pukur and live. She went there, she lived. They would get a, some part of the rice as the master's family, she would get her share of the rice. She would boil that rice. In the small plot, she would grow one or two greens. She had no money even to buy salt. So she could not eat salt. She would mix those greens and eat with the rice. Imagine, today we are worshipping her as divine. But what is the power of her decision? Her decision was, follow the master. Do what the master has told you. Do not put out your hand asking for any help from anybody. If they give, accept, but otherwise don't accept. Our decision-making abilities suffer whenever we have you know, any difficulty. In joy, happiness, we are good decision-makers. In times of trouble, we are bad decision-makers. But the mother shows us that is not the way in which we need to live. That is not the way in which we should be a leader. To be a good leader, we should face adversities with strength and we should have the ability to make decisions, even if those decisions are difficult for us to live through. Then you have, you know, the controlling of the ego. Very important for a leader. Usually the leader gets so much respect, so much adulation, so much worship 
that the leader becomes very egoistic. We find it in most leaders. The mother was not like that. In her teens, she was only a teenager, when she was worshipped as Mother Kali during Palaharani Kali Puja Day in May by Sri Ramakrishna, who is considered as an avatara. So you can imagine how much her ego would have, you know, risen if she was an ordinary person. She didn't have this leadership trait. She would have said, oh, he has worshipped me, so I'm the greatest. I'm better than him because he worshipped my, you know, feet. She never felt like that. She was always self-effacing. Whenever somebody, when she gave initiation, said, Mother, how to pray, how to do meditation, how to worship, how to become spiritual. She pointed to the master and said, keep the master in mind. She never said, I'm your guru. Keep me in mind. She never did that. Now, how many of us, even you know, famous leaders, are able to do that? Leadership seems to go with the ego. But the mother shows us that egolessness is a great leadership trait. Then, you know, we have the problem-solving ability. Good leaders always need to solve the problems. The mother had many problems. There was a time when the Britishers became suspicious of Ramakrishna Mutt. Belur Mutt was under real suspicion. The mother told them how to negotiate with the British, how to tell them that we are not terrorists here. These are young spiritual aspirants. After a long time with the mother's constant help, this problem was solved. You can see where the monks of the order, where the Guru Bhais of Swami Vivekananda were struggling. They were thinking, should we close the mat? Should we send these boys out who have a revolutionary background and who have come and joined us? The mother said, no, nobody who has come in the name of the master will ever be sent away. If one person is sent, all should be sent. I will not allow this to be closed. Therefore, the best thing is to negotiate with the British. And she did that. We also have her beautiful problem-solving ability in a family context. She had her younger brother's wife, who was slightly mentally deranged because her husband passed away at a very young age. She had a small child, Radhu. So everybody used to call her mad aunt, Pagli Mami. That is what she was called because she was the mother's brother's wife. But she was extremely attached to her jewelry. She had some jewelry which was given to her by her father during marriage. Now the father said, my daughter has become mad, so somebody will take away the jewels, so I will come and take it. He took them away. Seeing that she had lost her jewels, she became madder. This mad aunt became madder. She wanted those jewels back. Now the mother had to solve this problem. So two devotees came from Kolkata. She said, you go to that village. You tell this elderly man that he should give back that, those jewels. But please do not insult him. He's a very pious Brahmin. So please be respectful, but please be firm. Respectful doesn't mean weak. Please be very firm and try to get those jewels back. She solved this problem. There are hundreds and hundreds of experiences of the mother solving the problems of her large household. I cannot tell you all of them, because time is limited. But today, I just wanted to give a small introduction that the mother, who was a great democratic leader, 
you know, she practiced complete democratic leadership style. She was a leader who controlled, who conquered every difficult context. That is the definition of leadership, the ability to conquer a context. She was able to do wonderful spiritual work because she was a leader. She was able to manage her social life her family life, you know, her extended family, and she became the Sangha Janani, the mother of the order of this worldwide Ramakrishna order. The mother was there till 1920. By then, Ramakrishna Math had spread to many places apart from the central Belur Math. And today, in her name, we have Sri Sharada Mat, which was again a dream of uh, Swami Vivekananda. It all started with Sister Nivedita School, which has now become the Nivedita Research Center. The center, the core of this whole organization, the whole order is the mother. And not only a mother who quietly sits and all, a mother who leads all of us. She continues to lead us even today. If we have faith today, we find that at every step of our life, the mother is with us. The mother says that I have kept you on my lap. Suppose my child plays in the mud. I wipe the mud and take the child in my lap. So mud here is mistakes. Suppose we make the mistakes, the mother doesn't mind because she forgives those mistakes and she still loves us. Taking on her lap is showing love for the child. So this is the faith we need to have. How will we cultivate faith in the mother? By learning from her life, by practicing what she has taught us, by remembering the mother, every moment of each day. You know, no breath comes out of the body, no breath goes into the body without thinking of the mother. This, the concept of motherhood of God, that was a great contribution of Sri Ramakrishna. And the model of that motherhood is Holy Mother Sharada Devi. So she's an ideal woman, you know, ideal Indian woman. That is what Sister Nivedita found. She is a combination of the old and the new. This also she says. So we find in her qualities which we can, you know, adapt even today. In 2022, leadership is as important as it was in, you know, 1970s, 1860s or 1850s when the mother was born. So we can look at all these ideas and we can learn. In the process, we are also learning the biography of the mother. I thought I will do a four you know, videos on the mother. Revered Sri Kantanandaji has given me this permission and therefore my prayers to Maharaj again. And it's a wonderful opportunity to look at how the mother is relevant today, how the mother is making us better human beings, value-oriented, highly spiritual, and cultivate complete faith. Then we become the true child of the mother. No mud at all, because the mother is seen in a white sari. So we don't want that sari to become muddy. Therefore, we become more conscious. We take care of ourselves. We try to become leaders by controlling ourselves. So let us become a leader in the footsteps of the mother. Namaste and pronounce.